If you are a current, graduate, or a future computer science major student, then this video will highlight exactly what is going on with the tech layoffs, what is going to happen in the predicted future for our careers as software engineers, and the steps that you can do to look like a stronger candidate and get hired during these rough times. So as you may know, if you're not living under a rock, you know that there's a bunch of tech layoffs going on right now. It's everywhere on the news. It's making headline titles, right? Google cuts off 12,000 employees. 10,000 people are laid off from Microsoft. Meta is firing people. Salesforce is firing people. Amazon and the list goes on and on. So far in 2023, there's been already 46,000 people just laid off in tech, just laid off like that very quick, right? And what's worse is that some of these people who were laid off were students who thought they got a steady career, right? They got into the tech industry, they joined in as a software engineer only to be working there for six months or so and then getting fired right after. So obviously as a computer science grad myself and a current software engineer, this isn't really the news that I want to hear, nor you guys would probably want to hear either. So what exactly happened, right? Like why is everybody getting laid off? It turns out during the pandemic where we're all locked in, these tech companies apparently overhired all these software engineers and they're kind of paying them a good amount of money, you know, as software engineers, they're kind of just throwing money around to all these employees. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, everybody was at home. Everybody was using their tech devices, right? They're on social media. They're buying products online. They're just surfing the news online and all these things. Tech companies booming in sales. Now, the bad thing is after the pandemic's over, everybody's out and about again, back to our daily lives. Suddenly, these tech companies realize like, you know what? we actually overhired people and turns out that the revenue they're making from customers are plummeting because you know everybody's going on with their daily lives again now right so what happened is that all these tech companies they started laying people off and then other tech companies they see other companies lay people off and they're like well we gotta join in the layoff wave right so suddenly one company after another after another they started laying off all these software engineers and all these tech workers right and it just turned into a horror story for all the employees involved so here's the thing cs majors after hearing this news how do we stand out and make ourselves look better so we increase the chances of getting hired so i'm just going to jump right in on the things that you can do to make yourself look better first is to start on personal projects now or make more if you already have some now i'm not talking about a simple to-do list app or a simple calculator app that probably everybody has on their resume right there's a ton and i mean a ton of github projects online right now that you can actually fork over get started with and just modify and tamper around with and just kind of create your own personal project. And another good pointer is that it's good to have your personal project up there on the cloud somewhere. You could host it on the web and to have employers look at that and just being able to log on it themselves, that could really change everything. And it also is another important factor if your personal project especially stores data, like login data or just some kind of database online. Employers really, really like that as a personal project. Now there's a couple that I could think of kind of like an airport simulation project where you could track like dummy flights, dummy customers. You can make a gym membership website where people could sign up and people could, you know, check in and such. And there's all these different types of projects that could really make you stand out. A project that I did with a couple friends of mine back in college is a food delivery app, kind of like an Uber Eats Postmates type of thing where customers could sign up and it stores their data on a database. They could place orders and whatnot. And I believe that one actually helped me stand out as a candidate myself. And obviously you wanna to try to diversify your project, right? If you grew up with Java, you grew up with C++ or Python, you maybe wanna dive into another language, right? And that kind of leads me on to my next tip, which is to take a course or get certified in something. Try to dive into different sectors of computer science, like web development, cloud computing, AI, game development, whatever it may be. And it's never been so easy for this day to go on YouTube and kind of type in how to, you know, make a game how to do cloud computing, how to make a database. And all that stuff is within your fingertips. On top of that, you could also try getting certified, like a cloud computing certification, AWS certification, Microsoft Azure certification, and there's just a bunch more out there online for you to do. Now, the best part about getting certified or taking a certification class is that there's absolutely no commitment unlike a college degree. You doing a computer science major, sure, there's a degree at stake. If you fail, you know, it could kind of set you back in getting that degree, right? But if you take a certification class, there's really no commitment. You could just take it. And if you don't like it, you could just leave it. Or if you fail, you could always retake it. And it doesn't like hurt a GPA. It doesn't hurt a degree or whatever, right? It's kind of just on your own time. Tip number three is to network like crazy. And what I mean by this is you could even go on LinkedIn and just start messaging people, right? 
you could start messaging recruiters, you could start messaging your peers that you knew back then in college and just like strike up a conversation with them. Like, hey, how's it going? You know, how's your life at Google? How's your life on Amazon, right? And kind of just have a nice chat with them to kind of connect with them again or connect with them if they're someone new. Getting your name out there is essentially one of the best ways to get a job because first of all, you can actually get referred to a job because getting a referral, let's be honest, definitely increases your chances by a lot. And I mean a lot. Sometimes if you just cold apply, a bot looks at your resume, right? And your resume goes through a screener or whatever, and sometimes it doesn't pass the first round. If you get a referral, you may be lucky and actually get an actual human to look at your resume and consider you from there. And let's just say worst case scenario, you cold apply and you can't find a connection, right? You could always DM the recruiter. That's what I've been doing. If I want to apply for a job, for example, I always DM the recruiter or technical manager or whoever it is that could help me get into that position. If you're in school, attend the job fairs, attend the career fairs, all these conferences and networking events, you want to attend those to get again, your name out there and learn about a new company and where they could also learn more about you. Also, don't sleep on the clubs if you're still in school. Be sure to join clubs, even if it's a game development club, a computer science club, whatever kind of club it may be that's related in tech. Because again, you could always strike up a conversation with your fellow peers and your fellow colleagues. And it's going to be a shame if you don't strike up a conversation with someone because you're too shy or something. And that person could have been your potential referrer to a big company. And last but not least, what I want to say is update your resume and format it properly. There's a useful LinkedIn post out there, which I probably will link somewhere here down below in the description. It's a post by Jonathan Javier, which kind of outlines the way to set up a resume. It has all the keywords, all the action words, all the numbers and how it's supposed to be laid out. I believe this post is pretty useful myself. So you could go ahead and check it out and make sure you include all your recent accomplishments. And I mean, all your recent accomplishments. Don't leave anything out, even though it may seem minor to you, but employers could really seek that little thing that you did and add it as bonus points to you. And again, make sure all your phone numbers, your contact information, your LinkedIn link or whatever it is that's on that PDF file is all updated because the last thing you want is you knowing you got a job Job, but the recruiter can't actually contact you, right? You have no ways of contacting and they would probably think that you're ghosting them or whatever, and then they move on to the next candidate. So make sure everything there is updated, including your LinkedIn profile too. Make sure you update your LinkedIn profile so it looks good to future employers. Now, wrapping up all these tips, I wanna kinda talk about the future of software engineering. What is it gonna look like within the upcoming years, especially with all these layoffs going on, right? Are we gonna be okay? Are we gonna be fine? And how are we gonna get through this? After doing some research, I realized that this isn't the first time that this has happened. I just wasn't aware about it because I probably was a toddler, right? Just like crawling around but this has happened before in the past for generation x people in the past from 2001 to 2005 they did have the dot-com collapse where all the big tech companies kind of laid off like a quarter of their employees apparently the layoffs were so bad that it's worse than the recession of 1991 and the global crisis of 2008 especially in the tech division so this is why you may find people in the older generation who aren't worried as much because they have seen this happen before which kind of puts us at ease knowing that we'll somewhat bounce back, right, from all this layoff, which is obviously always true. Every time something collapses, it usually bounces back up. So I do want to say that as long as you try to stand out amongst your peers out there in this rough, rough market right now, it'll definitely put you at a higher advantage in terms of getting hired, despite all the layoffs that are going on. I would say as well that you could also try to find internships around because interns are paid, you know, much cheaper than full-time workers. And interns are a way for companies to bring on a new talent and eventually pick them up later on. So that's definitely a thing that's already been laid out there by tech companies that you could try to apply to today. Another piece of advice that I wanna say as well, coming personally from myself, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Try to get different ways you could get income, try to get different ways you could make money because if you just rely on your job, especially in this rough, rough software engineering market out there, you may be doomed, right? You never know what's gonna happen. So try to start small businesses and try to do freelance work. And again, it might help you out in earning money in ways that you probably never thought of before. So with that being said, I do wanna wish you guys the best of luck out there as a software engineer and as a computer science major myself. Hopefully the layoffs kind of plateau out and kind of die out in the upcoming future and that the job market for software engineers are kind of back, you know, stabilizing again i thank you guys for watching this video and i hope you guys find this video helpful if you did don't forget to consider leaving a like in this video or even subscribing to my channel and as you guys know i will catch you guys all in the next video